Hello everybody, I am back. This is Bananas and it's party time excellent. My today's guest of this new episode is my amazing friend, super talented musician and songwriter of Eluvati. Please welcome Kriggle. Enjoy! Party time excellent! <laughs> Hello, 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 my friends. I am back with this amazing human being today, Aww. being at Party Time Excellent. Kriegel, thank you so much for finding time for me. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> of it's course, really good of course. To talk to you once again. Yes, I know. I've been missing you and the band and everything that happened Aww. in autumn 2019. What yes. beautiful memories, huh? Yes. I know, Absolutely. we were editing some of the tour videos and it made me oh. so, um, I don't know, it made me sad, but at the same time, it was some kind of melancholy. I was like, oh my God, I want to <laughs> go back on tour so much. So for everybody who doesn't know, Infected Rain's last tour was actually a European tour supporting Elevati. Um, and that was it, you know, then this happened in the world. So... You know, when we just we just gave to people another part of that tour because we just filmed behind the scene a lot. And that made me think, I really miss you. I should talk to you and I should invite you to party time excellent. So <laughs> thank you really one more time no, for thank finding you. time. It's cool. So uh, tell me, Kriegel, I really like to um, uh, start my um, episodes on party time excellent with asking every guest, what is your guilty pleasure what is your thing that one thing or person or maybe whatever it is that means for you okay it's party time <laughs> uh, that's actually quite a hard question because i <laughs> honestly don't party that much uh, yeah, um, well, you know, party party can mean different things. Not necessarily, you know, a bunch of like loud music, uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. You know what I mean? Like party could be, I don't know, just a relaxing thing. Party is different for everybody. That's why I really want to know what does it party mean for you yeah, and how yeah, do you uh, do it? I, I was just gonna say, like, I, I mean, yeah. we we do party. It's just that probably no one else on the planet would recognize this as partying. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Um, I feel you there. Uh, what, what, what I um, enjoy most these days uh, is actually something I do have every day, every evening, which is very, very cool. <laughs> what is it? Um, and that would be sitting here on this very table, in this very place, uh, in the evening after the kids are in bed, together with Nicole, and drink a bottle of white wine and smoke some cigarettes and just talk about a day and stuff and you know right. sp spending some time with you know that beautiful person back there and mm -hmm. the other ones that are on this side and you know I mean we, we've always spent a lot of time with animals rather than humans to be honest and but ever since the, the corona lockdown this this increased heavily so <laughs> actually oh, yeah. I, I, I don't have that much human interaction anymore and most of my time I spend with animals and I it just did so so much good to me yeah that's my that's sure. my guilty pleasure <laughs> I love it I love it talking about that would you please introduce me to this beautiful creature behind you please <laughs> <laughs> yep so ladies and gentlemen this is Smilla Oh, she's hi. a she's a girl. She's still pretty young. We just uh, celebrated her sixth birthday like two months ago or something like that. I love um, her hair. <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous of her hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, she's she's an Icelandic horse, and thus the name Smilla is um. Well, it's actually Greenlandic for smile, which oh, wow. suits her very well. She's like she's you know very smiling. very happy, and and nice. gentle person actually. So tell me, did you ever, uh, did you always live in an environment surrounded by animals and nature, or is this something you just uh, try to do um, later now nowadays, like later years? I, I mean, I've I've been living in a countryside for a long time, like more okay. than. Two so decades. you're not a city yes. boy. 
<laughs> well, I, I, I love cities, and uh, and I used to live in a city. Uh, I used to live in Winterthur. Okay. It's a, a city, uh, well, east of Zurich. It's a, a, quite quite a big city, actually. But okay. um, I actually I still remember that that morning. You know, I, I was still uh, I already or I, I was about to found El at that time. Okay. Um, and uh, and obviously I, I still had a day job at at, at that moment. And um, I remember this one morning I, I just got up and you know walked to the bus station to go to work. And uh, I had to cross like the main road, which every morning there was like a traffic jam for like an hour or something crazy. And it was just this one morning where, when I stood there and waited to to cross the street, and I was just like, okay, that's it. Like I cannot live like that anymore. <laughs> like when I get up, get up in the morning, I want to hear birds and not fucking cars, you know. Yes. And, yeah. Uh, that's that's when I decided, okay, that that's it. I'm I'm out of here. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Ever, ever since I live on a countryside, actually. But uh, okay. you, you know, like the the living together with animals that just increased over the years now, and I, yeah. I, I think I think we're not done yet. <laughs> there, yeah. uh, there, there will be more animals here. So you, you know, know that. The question is always the same and a lot of people ask me as well but I'm wondering I you know you know me I'm a big big animal lover and planet lover and for me it was always so challenging especially when going on tour who is taking care who is taking care of your animals because both you and Nicole are touring musicians you know these creatures need love and attention and care. So, what do you do? What's the good remedy for that? We the- we, we oh. are actually very 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 lucky and privileged. I would say we, we have a very uh, lucky situation here, mm-hmm. uh, because the other two horses that I just showed you, they they don't belong to our family. They they just live here in our house. Um, okay. And um, you know, uh, Sally, she's as I mentioned, she's just an old lady she's an old horse and Picasso she uh, he was uh, rescued out of a uh, you know bad he was rescued from a bad place he was uh, almost starved to death when he when he uh, was rescued it was, it was fucking terrible you, you would not recognize him anymore now um, wow. so he was rescued and, and um, the the woman who, uh, who took care of or, or who still takes care of them she was looking for a place for them to live Mm-hmm. And that's how we got in touch. And we have a, like a, a huge fucking stable and only one horse living here. And, yeah. And uh, so it, and for Smilla, it was also like you know she for us it was clear that uh, she needs more company anyway. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. So yeah. Now the two of them they live here. Mm-hmm. And uh, but that woman she she is here. Uh, every day, um, she helps taking care of the stable and everything, Hi. all the land, and you know it's 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 almost some kind of a, like a like a community thingy. Yes. <laughs> and she she Never. also has like uh, like also her mother is is here quite often. I just sit here and drink coffee, and oh. and then she also has like a young girl, like a sixteen year old girl. I mean, it, not her daughter, but it's just like a girl who loves horses and also yeah. takes care of these two on a regular almost daily base actually uh so it's 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 almost like a like a community thing yeah or if by the time it kind of became it kind of developed into something like that so there's always a lot of people here actually and uh, and whenever we're on tour um you know one of them or all them together they take care of, of the animals that are part of our that's family so nice. that's so so nice it's nice to hear yeah, you know because cool. animals they are just like children, you know, and especially when we're talking about such high intelligent animals like horses and dogs, you know, they they really do miss us, you know, when we go. I do also have a very uh, good friend that is taking care of uh, my dog when I'm on tour, but it breaks my heart every time to leave her, although I know she's in good hands. And every time I come back, you know, she just loses her mind when she sees me. So... It really is hard, and that was one of the reasons why I tried to avoid having actually to have animals, um, because it's so so hard. You know, it's like part of the family when you leave them behind. Um, 
Yeah. That leads me to the next question. You know, um, I think there's no better person than you to ask, how does m musical career and choosing this path as a musician influence your personal life at all during all these years, you know? And maybe you remember some interesting stories you want to share from the past or maybe something from now. Do you think that um, this is sometimes a difficult path to have uh, at the same time with a personal life? Or do you think that, uh, you know, when there's like true love and true communication between, um, you know, a husband and a wife or just a couple or just, you know, whatever family members, um, there's no questions asked and everything is smooth. How, how, what, what is your experience in this? You've been you've been on, on tours and and on in the music industry for so long, and I that's why yeah. I think you're the best person to ask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, honestly, I, I do think it's definitely not always an easy path. Actually, it's probably never an easy path. <laughs> it's never an easy road to go. And um, but uh, I, I think that's all at the same time. That's also what makes it so great. And um, because I, I don't think everything that's easy is not worth too much, I think. And, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, you know, it's especially when, when, when other people are involved, no, no matter if, if you're talking about animals or, or well, animals called humans, uh, yeah. it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I think you kind of have to, to decide for this path with everybody involved. <laughs> Hey guys, we had to reconnect because internet doesn't work well somewhere, I don't know where, but for some reason connection got very weak. So here we are again, Kriegel changed the beautiful view of the horses with the house, which is also pretty nice. Look at that. <laughs> okay. uh, so yeah, it's a diff different network here. So yeah. let's try that. <laughs> Hopefully, fingers crossed, we won't lose you again. We want to have you here. So I believe we 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 catched the be the beginning of your answer and uh, just lost you while you were telling us a story about something, and I could only hear a robot <laughs> telling me a story in a weird language in my ear. <laughs> I, I was just uh, saying that I think that uh, if if you're uh, living together with other people, be it humans or, or other species, then, um, you know, <clears throat> if you decide for that road of being a touring musician, then you definitely need to decide together with all these people, you know, and then and if someone involved in your life is not happy with your that, with, with that decision, I, I think you should do something about it. Yeah. And, um, so yeah, but um, but yeah, I, I definitely think that uh, being on that road did influence my life or our life yeah. uh, in 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 so many ways. And one one thing I, I mentioned before, I, I think it's it's most of the time it's it's not an easy path. I mean, you know, you know, it. You're, you know, you told me. Uh, a few times like how hard you work that you guys are hard workers and you need to be that if you want to if you want to be a touring musician it's yeah. it's it's a fucking hard job yeah it's the most beautiful job on the planet probably but it's a hard job mm -hmm. and um and and yeah that, that's that's the thing I, I as i said before i i think you know things that are easy or too easy are not worth that much and it's also the other way around for me and so this this really enriched my life a lot and also like uh having that that privilege to actually tour around the, the world you know it's 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 an absolute privilege that most people don't have ever in their life you know at, at least not to the extent that that we do yeah and um, having that privilege also gave so so much to to us. We we learned so much because 
you know, even though most of the time you just see airports and and roads and concert venues every now and then, you still do have some spare hours and you know get into the city or whatever it is, get into the the culture you're currently playing. And damn, we've we've seen so many things, you know, and you know, walking the streets of Dhaka in Bangladesh, for instance, that just fucking changes your life. Oh yeah. You know? And it just makes you realize how how incredibly good your life actually is and, and how incredibly ridiculous all of your complaints about stupid little details are, actually. Yeah. And how, how thankful you can be for everything you have. And, you know, that that's also one thing that I really appreciate uh, about being a, a touring musician. Yeah. It's, it, it makes you learn a lot. Absolutely. That's very beautifully said, actually. You know, I, I think that especially for people that don't travel very much uh, for work or for, you know, just pleasure, vacation, it's a little bit more difficult to understand this part uh, of mentality mm. and it's not their fault it's nobody's fault you know no. the, the perfect example would be people that used to live in USSR um, it was very um, the the tourism and the traveling was very limited so that's why mm. a lot of our like where I come from a lot of our like grandparents some some even some parents they are still very close-minded and when they see something extraordinary like a different looking person or just a rebel in uh, thinking or in mm -hmm. acting person for them it's like out of this world they're like oh my god what are the people gonna think or something like that right but yeah, when you, yeah, yeah. yeah but when you start traveling a little bit and opening your mind to different possibilities to different cultures to different situations in the world you understand that little things like um you know little things that are so important as well they don't matter as much, you know, and mm -hmm. it's difficult to maybe understand uh, if you are a partner of a traveling, full-time traveling musician to understand that you missing me is not a big deal. There are bigger problems in this world, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just, you know, to, <laughs> just yeah. stop it. Like, think about other things, you know, there are other things that could be more important, more substantial. But yeah, it's it's a difficult pot path, just like you said, because a lot of people mm -hmm. think that when we are on the road, we are living, uh, you know, a dream, like, it's like a dream come true. And it is, but it's hard work at the it same is. time. And yeah. but in the eyes of people that don't know it, it's like a full time party. Which is not really yeah. like that, right? We know, like we <laughs> not lose, exactly, no. <laughs> we lose weight on tour. We be, we we acquire wrinkles on tour. <laughs> like I don't know all those things because we do so much for that hour or two hours mm -hmm. on the stage to happen. You know, and and that was beautifully said, really. And I think people that are gonna watch this episode have to. Um, think or realize that you know it's a big sacrifice that musicians do but with we are doing this because we want to and because we think it's worth it but behind this uh, image that we show that we share that we um, want to put out there for our fans and music lovers behind all that there is an ordinary person that has ordinary uh, needs and ordinary mm -hmm. life, maybe, you know, maybe even more mm -hmm. ordinary than some people think. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's not talk about sad things anymore. I want to talk about something super exciting. I'm so, so, so uh, curious about what's uh, in there for your band and you in general um, for the upcoming album upcoming material i know you guys were planning uh we were talking about that even while uh, on tour that soon you guys are going to put out a new album and you have ideas about it i really want you to share at least what you can share for us please please yeah. please <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, it's it's true. We currently are working on our next album, and and uh, I'm so fucking excited. <laughs> you are <laughs> nice. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited. I I think it's like uh, I'm. I'm already in love with that album very, very, very much. Nice. Well, I, I, I'm in love with the other albums, but I, I don't know. There's, there's something about this one that just really um, excites me a lot. Nice. <laughs> and, that's uh, a good. That's a good uh, feeling. Yeah. But I, I, I don't want to blab out too much, to be no, honest. No, just a little bit. Just give still us that. in a very early, early um, stage. Yeah. But uh, I think it's it's gonna going to be a, a, a pretty. Um, how do you say that? It's going to be an album with a with a pretty strong message, and uh, you know, uh, I think we we're, we're kind of continuing the that path that we that we went with our last album with Atechnatos, but we're just you know continuing that and, and going that path like even even stronger deeper. and uh, and deeper and you know it's. The album will be fully based on uh, some ancient, like like really, really fucking ancient <laughs> writings um, that have been found, uh -huh. um, and we, you know, we give that album will give voice to some knowledge of of our forefathers of the Druids, and it it will hold, or like I mean, these ancient scriptures actually uh -huh. do hold some uh, really really fucking serious words for our nowadays societies I, I can't would say. wait to hear that <laughs> I'm excited for you guys that's so cool so so awesome um, thank you yes <laughs> it is I always thought if you can have a theme or an atmosphere for the whole album this is so amazing i was never able to do that i'm just all over the place with my writing uh, i'm the one writing lyrics for infected rain and whenever it comes to that i just can't concentrate so much on one i feel like a broken record and maybe that's not the way i should feel but i always admired bands that could find like that one uh, amazing like theme for the whole album and just work with that and just deliver all the songs in the same direction it's really cool actually okay thank you yeah no i really but 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 you, you guys are working on new record as well right aren't you we are we do um how to explain uh we are actually very early with that but we always write all the time, no matter what. Uh, mm. My boys uh, throw ideas uh, music-wise. I write lyrics all the time, no matter what, if I'm like due to go in the studio or not. I just put down ideas. That's the same pretty much how my boys mm. work. But yes, it's true, with the, with the lockdown especially, we kind of uh, rolled our sleeves a little and started working a little as well. We do not have um, uh, our ideas or thoughts aligned for it fully yet but yes we do have already a, a very very good start considering uh considering that since we gave to people our last album not even a year like passed mm -hmm. so i think um due to the you know coronavirus we are going to probably give our album to people earlier than we uh would have if we were touring a lot and you know so uh, I have some interesting thoughts about uh, lyrics and songs, and my boys are super excited about it too. Uh, the, cool. the 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 most exciting part, but scary at the same time for me, uh, is the fact that unfortunately I can't travel to be with my musicians for the very first time while recording this album, mm -hmm. and this is challenging for me because I'm very mm -hmm. very far. I'm literally on the other side of the planet, and. Mm -hmm. I could try risking going there, but I might not be able to come back for a while. So for yeah. now, we are we are still waiting for the things to calm down a little. Uh, but uh, thanks to this like situation, I also uh, try not to give up and to just you know roll my sleeves and work from home. So thanks to the love and support of my my. Um, uh, Patreon people, fans and supporters of the band and fans and supporters of me as an artist, I was able to invest and build my little um, uh, vocal booth at home. 
Oh. Yes, so so <laughs> I did that and I started uh, studying a little bit of Cubase and with the help, yeah, oh my God, don't start me there. I feel like I'm a hugger now. <laughs> but That's awesome. Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm still learning. I, have, I only know how to play rec <laughs> and uh, delete. <laughs> no, 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 I'm kidding. I, obviously, I had to learn more than that, but my boys are very patient. And I'm I'm super thankful for that. The sound engineer and producer of all, all our albums I happen to be a good, good friend of ours. And he is helping me and assisting me a lot as well whenever I have questions. So basically, yeah, I can uh, literally spend how much time I want in that booth uh, and just be creative. Um, so it's going to be challenging, but... It's working and I am very happy because I did just release a new song uh, featured by Seas on the Moon, which is the band of my drummer. He has another band. Yes, yeah, so my drummer Eugene, together with his brother, he has a band forever. This band exists forever. Mm -hmm. They are not a touring band, but they have a lot of music. And I did songs with them before, and they uh, insisted and invited me to do it again. And we actually just released uh, the song with its music video two days ago. It's called Opium. Oh. Go check it out. <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely need to. Yeah, yeah so basically, cool. uh, I, yes, I recorded it all by myself. It's my first, uh, it's my for, first uh, work I did by myself, fully alone, uh, working remotely on the, uh, with the boys so everybody loved it so much which encourages me to do more and I think I can do this with Infected Rain as well because sure. I received a, a big a good feedback with this song mm -hmm. um, I was so nervous oh my god you have no idea you know how vocalists <laughs> are right we go in a studio we are in our little cubby vocal booth and we are like, oh, can I try again? I want to do it again. Or, th or the sound engineer is like, okay, can you do more takes or do this or record this? And you do, you're in the zone and you're in the mood and you feel the atmosphere and the things that you want to deliver and you're there and you're doing it, right? For me, it takes normally, I record like one or two songs a day, sometimes vocal wise. But here at home alone, I am the one. Okay, so not only I have to push buttons by myself, I have to also be my own, my own critic and be like, oh, this sucked. I got to do it again <laughs> or something, you know. So basically, it's challenging and it takes me way longer, obviously. But it works. It's fun. It's a good new experience. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Do you, uh, do you always... Um, record your ideas right in the studio or you have your ideas ready and you go only for the like actual recording um i guess i explained myself uh, all wrong what i meant is <laughs> do you compose the melody for the vocals in the studio or you get ready and go to the studio only for the recording i know uh, okay. i know musicians do different um. Usually I'm actually quite fast, and but it, it is, it's funny. I, I kind of made the same experience like you did. Um, uh, I, I I don't know if it's because of the the COVID nineteen lockdown, but uh, in the last three months I've been asked for you know guest vocals by by a lot of bands somehow, and uh, obviously I couldn't go to any studio, so yeah. I recorded recorded all of these at home, and I. Uh, it, I just fucking love it. Nice. <laughs> uh, I I love it so much. It's so much more comfortable. And um, but usually I'm 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 super fast actually. And um, but I I think this has to do with the way we we always uh, produced our album, which was always like under crazy crazy stress and and you know with way too little time. And, you know, it's, you know, as it is, you know, it's always the drummer first and then the guitars and bass and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, at least for us, the vocals always come last. Yeah, yeah. And it was always like, we we had too little time in the studio anyway. And obviously each of the musicians took a little longer than planned. Mm -hmm. 
And at the end of the day, you probably like, you know, you plan like four or five days for the vocals and then there's probably two days left. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know, so, and, and while the others were recording, I'm, I'm always in the studio and, you know, like kind of working as a, you know, producing yeah. them. And, and, you know, so I'm also don't have much time to, to, you know, prepare my vocals there. So actually, uh, it's, it's quite often like that, that I even write the lyrics in the studio. Um, like just, you know, after the recording sessions, before I go to bed or something yeah. like that, or early in the morning. Uh, uh, at this point, I have to say, like, I, I always, you know, w w when we create a new album, the, the, the first thing I do is always I, I create a concept um, about, about the whole album. Like, I, I need to have, like, this picture of the, the, the final full album before my inner eye, before even starting to compose the particular songs. Okay. So um, for each song that we write, I already know uh, what the song is about, what, what words, what message it will deliver, and so on and so on. Because I, I, I don't want to have music and then just random lyrics because uh, like I, I want that our songs also musically express what the lyrics are about. Absolutely. Um, but only because I know what the song will say doesn't mean that I have, you know, to spell out lyrics, yeah. you know, <laughs> so um, it's quite often like that, that I even write the lyrics in the studio and due to the fact that it always was like I just said, it's, um, I, I just needed to, to become very fast somehow and uh, it's uh, for, for actually a lot of our songs it even was like that, uh, that I was sitting in the kitchen of the studio writing lyrics and then once I, I finished like one verse, I just went into the cabin and took like three takes. Yeah. I, I just did something, I just improvised, yeah. you know, like the rhythm and everything. And then I told the producer, okay, now you have like three takes, edit something, do something, mm -hmm. choose whatever you think is good. In the meantime, I will go and write the second verse mm -hmm. and then go back and stuff like that. You know? Yeah, I know some and, musicians um, do, do that and it works well. It works really well. I mean, whatever works, right? Whatever really works. I, I like this. Uh, it's, it's a completely different perspective on vocals and lyric writing. So, you know, I think it works perfect for you guys because, you know, at least what I heard uh, during the whole tour and at least what <laughs> I heard from the last album of you guys, I think it's it's the perfect scenario for the type of music that you're doing, the message that you tried to deliver. It worked perfectly. Well, to be honest, I mean, thanks to the Corona pandemic, we do have a little more time now. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I, I really, really love that. I mean, I, I do have the advantage of being like really fast with everything, but you know, it's it's not, we, we didn't do it that way to, for the last few albums because I loved to do it that way because I liked it. I, I fucking hated it, you know, but there was no other choice. Yeah. I, I It just had to be done like that. And we had deadlines, we had to be finished. So there's no, there's no way around mm -hmm. it. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm super, super happy and excited that we do have more time now. And uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm also really looking forward to the, to the, to the outcome because I I think it, it can only improve the quality if, if you have more time I guess yes absolutely you know if you take more time uh, things can you know come out better but at the same time you have to be very careful because there are so yeah, yeah, many yeah. bands out you, there I know where you're going yeah there are so many bands out there and if you are not in the moment, in the wave, you know, and pretty constant with uh, your material for people. It's like they put you on the shelf somewhere and they take, you know, it's like when you read books and you can't stop, you know, uh, you want to know what's going to be in a second part of the book or whatever. And but you're waiting for that part. So it's kind of like that for me. I listen to so much music whenever like a band stops for a long, long time. You almost like, you, you get into other bands and you listen, which is good because, you know, everybody has to have their own time and their own chance to be listened. But you don't want to wait for too long. But at the same yeah. time, just like you mentioned, I am 
in a way also i'm trying to see the positives in this situation as well and i'm thankful that we have this time you know look at me i i'm learning cubase <laughs> <laughs> and you know i build this thing i it was a dream coming true actually building and having a vocal booth in my own house you know what mm, i mean cool. i never had this privilege i always had to be with the band it was always like a teamwork um and I loved it that way. I was used to that for four albums. We did the same ritual over and over again. I did have a little bit of pressure, just like you mentioned, because I live far and whenever I travel for the band, we have a certain amount of time to record, a certain mm. amount of time to get ready for the yeah. tour and blah, blah, blah. So I am familiar with that. But at the same time, uh, working with the same producer for all these years helps because he always knows what I'm capable of, what I can do, where I can, where he can like push me a little or vice versa saying like stop me where I'm going too far or something like that. So that's really nice. Mm. And um, but at the same time, just like you said, it's really nice to have your own time. You can literally go in the middle of the night if you feel like it and record. It's your own house. <laughs> Unless the neighbors yeah. are going to lock in the door and be like, are you guys killing somebody? Why is there so many screaming? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think my neighbors are used to it already. <laughs> yeah, same here, I guess. Oh my God, that, that's awesome. I think people are going to be just excited because I am very excited for this new material uh, you guys are coming out with. Uh, with. And Thanks. I think it's going to be, it's going to be, you know, for everybody who is working on a new album during coronavirus uh, pandemic world situation, I think for everybody, their new material, their new album is going to be unique and different because I, I think so as well yeah for every band yeah. you know yeah. all right so i want to ask you um a few more questions before we are done um i just don't want to take too much of your time but you know just like you just like we mentioned before you've been in this industry for so so long if there could be one thing that you could change what would that be <laughs> I'm 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 actually not a fan of of changing things in that sense. Okay. Uh, you know you know uh, so I I don't think I, I I would change anything. Good. I mean Good. there that's you know a, there's a, a lot of things that I'm not happy with. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's a bit the same. You, you, you know uh, I I've been I've often been asked like if you could change anything in your life like either present or past you know in, yeah. pa in, in, uh, I I always said like I, I wouldn't change anything you know that, that there's so many things in my life I, I wasn't happy with mm -hmm. obviously yeah I, I had to eat shit like everybody else and stuff like that um, but all of this is what made me me and um, you know if I took just one little thing away it's not me anymore so yeah. I, I I would not change anything and and it's a, it's a little bit like that okay uh, with other things too because you know that th there are things in this world that we can work for you know to, to achieve a change mm -hmm. and I think we should do that for for a lot of, a lot of things and there's also things in the music industry that, that are not really great sometimes you know and if we the musicians can do something about it then I guess we should but um, that's that's another way of changing something uh, yeah and 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 if you ask me if i could just change like and then something is different i wouldn't do that okay okay because so then it would make everything different yeah and, that's, and that's a good question that's a good yeah. uh, way of seeing this that is a good way of seeing it nice okay well i do love to end my episodes with two questions that are absolutely the okay. same for every artist or just okay. friend that i invite <laughs> it's super easy question uh but i think it's very um it's a very good question because nobody else asks us that so basically 
I know you, just like me or other fellow musicians, we do get a lot of interviews. Nowadays, we live in the era of constant, you know, possibilities and in interviews with musicians. It's not like back in the days when you did one interview a year and everybody was reading it until, you know, <laughs> over and over again because this is the only one they have. So please tell me, is there a question that you've been asked so many times that you are so tired of answering already. I have a few of those. And every time I see them, I roll my eyes and I'm like, Usa, and one more time and I will explode. Do you have a question like that, that you're like, I'm over it. Really? You're asking me this again? <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore? I, I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm past this. Okay. I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> but uh, I, so I, I did have a few of those in the past, but it's just... After some years, I just realized, okay, there's no point in, in, you know, freaking out about it because, you know, people won't stop asking these yeah, questions. So I understand be, that so, too. So to, today, I don't care anymore. But, you know, like a few years back, I was like going crazy when people asked me, like, what does LAT mean? Exactly. For instance, yeah. I, I was like, dude, stop calling yourself a fucking journalist. Yeah. You know, like, like Google it. I, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, Google it. Like, that's exactly... I, I think in one entry, I even said that to the guy. I, I, he asked me that, and, and I was like, dude, this is exactly what we have Wikipedia for. So, like, I mean, pe people don't want to hear that. They they already know. They don't care if you don't, because yeah, they know. Yeah. They, they want to hear interesting stuff, absolutely, so please, come on. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, it's good that you passed over that. I'm trying, you know, I have other questions similar to that. <laughs> that are just constant, constant. And I'm like... Like, like, like what? Like, uh, I'm curious. how is it to be a girl in a metal industry? Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> this is, that, uh, uh, every now and then I do have interviews together with Fawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she gets exactly that. And it's like, of oh my, like, are you guys stupid? And this is stupid, over and oh over and over again. And there are others like that. Okay, oh. now, now that you answer that one, I have one that is vice versa. Do you think there's a question that is, is, it, is an important question, is important information. You're like, why people never ask me this? Is there any question like that? Have you ever thought about it? No, no? Not, not really. Okay. I mean, like, I definitely would be happy if a journalist once would come up to me and tell me something like, okay, you have like four hours now, explain all of your lyrics. <laughs> that would make me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I don't think this is going to happen. Yeah. So you would you would want to have the possibility to explain your lyrics? Sometimes. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think I would enjoy that. Uh -huh. I, I mean, it's as you probably noticed, I, I also just talk, talk a lot. And I like to talk a lot. <laughs> but you are, fun, you are a fun person to talk because you listen, you give time to people. You're a fun person to talk. Thank you. Yes. Likewise. Thank you. <laughs> You really are. There are people that love talking and you can't stop them. You have to be like, okay, you're off topic. <laughs> Where did this start? <laughs> it's still fun to talk to people okay. like that. People of art tend to just wonder. Their mind just wonder, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. Well, nice. Nice to know, you know. And uh, as a lyric writer, I do understand that urge to want to explain sometimes, you know, and it's really funny to know. I do this little game sometimes with my fans online. Whenever I uh, put a new song, I am like, can you guys share your thoughts and opinions about what this song is actually about? And their thoughts and opinions yeah, this are... Is cool. And this, um, I'm like, oh, okay, I can see why you thought about that. It's not about that, but I can see why you can think it's about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's really Yeah, we, we once did that. I think we only did it once, but we once did that, and it's this is super cool. Yeah, yeah, it is. Cause super, super interesting as well. Because mm -hmm, you discover other, you know, points of view and other... Mm -hmm. Even sometimes really interesting ideas, maybe that mm -hmm. will influence you, you know, and give you mm -hmm. uh, that little push to write a new lyric on that topic next time, you know. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kriegel, for uh, 
offering me this whole hour of your time. Thank you for giving me a lot of energy Thank and you. positivity. Continue with the perfect work. Continue with, uh, you know, doing what you do and the way you do it. Because I think there are not no. many people like you. And a lot of people should take example. And, you know, I hope to see you guys soon on tour. And yeah. again, you have a good rest of your day. Thank you so much. Party time, excellent. Thank you. So thank you so much. It was so good to talk to you once again. And yeah, have a wonderful day. I think it's still morning. In oh yeah, your it's place. it's noon. Yeah. So oh noon. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, sorry for all the disconnections. Oh, don't worry, don't worry, internet. don't worry. That's. Uh... <laughs> so yeah, have a wonderful day and talk to you soon. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Thank you so much.